Welcome to this universal cold and dark start tutorial for Concorde. We're demonstrating using the PSS Concorde Professional, but this will also work for FS Labs Concorde X as well as any simulated Concorde with a realistic flight engineer panel. First up, tank 11 inlets to auto. Verify standby inlets are shut. And verify trim pipe drain is shut. Verify jettison valves are closed and guarded. Make sure parking brake is on, ground power is available and close for ground power breaker. Verify battery selectors are off. Forward supply selector to on for the equipment bay fans and verify the other switches on the same row are in these positions. And switch on the left hand and right hand its tractors here. Verify the positions of the switches shown here. On the lower overhead panel, cancel the warnings and press inhibit. On the upper overhead panel flight deck door, open. Verify position of the interphone switch. Should be normal. Switch on fasten seatbelts and no smoking signs. Set the emergency evacuation lights to armed. Verify servo controls are in normal position. Verify emergency light selector is on, anti-collisions are off. Switch nav lights on, test the overhead panel warning and then return it to the higher position. Verify auto ignition is off, switch throttle master switches to main, 1, 2, 3 and 4. All four auto throttle switches to on. Verify high pressure valves are shut. Verify relay jack selector is normal. Return to the engineers panel. Verify the engine start selectors are off. Test engineer panel warning lights and return to high. Verify brake pressure is 3 to 4,000 psi and switch on for brake fans. Set fuel heater selectors to auto and verify engine recirculation valves are shut. Verify the takeoff CG switch is set to normal and guarded. Verify engine 4 takeoff M1 limiter is normal. Set engine 1 to 4 ground idle switches to low. Verify engine control rotary selector is set to normal. Verify engine control schedule selector is set to auto. Verify secondary air doors are shut. Verify in flight reverser switch is set to released. Set all four engine bleeds to open. Then test the overpressure lights. And verify the indicators return to the inline position. Return engine bleeds to the closed position. Switch on cross bleed valves 2 and 3. Verify 1 and 4 remain in the closed positions. Set the tank 9 inlet valve to auto. Verify the override selector is off. Make sure the tank 9 pump selectors are auto. Verify tank 10 pump selectors are auto. Verify tank 5A and 7A pump switches are off. Verify tanks 1 and 4 switch is set to normal. Verify tank 11 green and blue selectors are auto. Set tank 11 pump 1 and 2 selectors to auto. Verify transfer valves 5A and 7A are shut. And that tank 5 and 7 pump selectors are off. And set tank 5 inlet main to auto. Also set tank 7 inlet main to auto. Verify tank 5 and 7 inlet overrides are off. Verify tank 6 and 8 pump selectors are set to off. Verify interconnect valves 5 to 8 and 6 to 7 are off. Verify all engine pump switches are off. 
and that crossfeed indicators are crossline. Switch hydraulic green 1 and green 2 selectors to auto. Switch hydraulic selectors blue 3 and blue 4 to auto. Switch hydraulic selectors yellow 2 and yellow 4 to auto. Verify yellow pump switch is normal and guarded and that low pressure lights are illuminated. Verify that hydraulic pressure is at zero. Verify CSD disconnect switches are normal and guarded and that the CSD lights are illuminated. Verify generator load power readings are zero. Verify that generator selectors are in the on position. Verify GCB indicators are crosslined and generator lights are illuminated. Verify AC bus lights are not lit. Verify BTB selectors are normal and guarded. Verify BTB and SSB indicators are inline. On the emergency generator panel, make sure the bus indicators are inline. Make sure the bus indicator lights are not illuminated. Make sure the isolator switch is normal and guarded. Verify the bus bar switches are in the normal position and the emergency generator selector switch is auto. Verify overheat lights are not illuminated and that the emergency generator load is zero. Verify the AC main bus is showing a load of around 40 amps. Verify the indicators below are inline and the lights are not lit. Set the generator switches to on. Set the water heater switch to on. Set the warning lights to test and return to high. We'll also test the auto land, autopilot and auto throttle annunciator lights. We can also test the MCP indicator lights demonstrated here is testing the flight director. On the lower overhead panel, verify auto stability pitch yaw and roll is off. Verify auto stability 2 pitch roll and yaw is off. Electric trim is off. Artificial fill number 1 and 2 is off. Set blue and green inverters to on. Set elevons to blue and set rudder to blue. Switch on the anti stall system. Verify landing lights, taxi lights, and de ice are off. Returning to the engineers panel, set secondary air doors to auto. Switch on for batteries. Switch on anti-collision lights. It's now time to start the engines. Switch on the main engine pump switch for engine number 3. Switch engine start switch number 3 to start. Verify that N2 is above 10%. On the upper overhead panel, open high pressure valve number 3. The engine will spool up and start successfully. We'll see the engine ignition switch has returned to off. Open engine number 3's bleed valve. Verify cross bleed remains open and set the conditioning valve selector to on. Switch on the main engine pump for engine number 2 and set start switch number 2 to start. Verify N2 exceeds 10%. Open high pressure valve number 2 on the upper overhead panel. Verify a good start on engine number 2. Verify engine start switch 2 has returned to off. Open engine 2's bleed valve and conditioning valve. On the electrical panel, verify CSD2 and CSD3 lights are no longer illuminated. 
Set hydraulic pumps green 1 and green 2 to on. Set hydraulic pumps blue 3 and blue 4 to on. We can now set ground power to trip to disconnect it. Open cross bleed valve 4. Switch on for main engine pump for engine number 4. Set the engine start switch for engine number 4 to start. Verify N2 above 10%. Open high pressure valve number 4. Verify good start on engine number 4. Verify start switch number 4 is off. Open bleed valve number 4. And open conditioning valve number 4. Verify CSD4 light is no longer illuminated and open cross bleed valve number 1. Switch engine 1 main pump switch on. Set engine 1 start switch to start. Verify engine 1 N2 above 10%. Open high pressure valve 1. Verify good start on engine number 1. Verify engine 1 start switch return to the off position. Open engine 1 bleed valve. Open engine 1 conditioning valve. Verify CSD1 is not illuminated. Switch off all four cross bleeds. Set all standby engine pump switches to on. On the overhead panel, switch on electric trim 1 and 2. Switch on auto stability, pitch roll in your 1 and 2. Switch on artificial fill, 1 and 2. Hit recall on the thoughts panel, make sure it's clear. With the engines now started, we can do our final prep for flight, so we'll set the nose to 5 degrees. Switch on the taxi lights. Switch auto ignition on. It's at this point you configure your autopilot and taxi outs for runway. With engine started and everything functioning as it should, we can hand over the flight portion to the virtual flight engineer. They'll now transfer fuel as required, including initially from tank 9 to tanks 5 and 6. Once we are on the runway ready for flight, we'll switch off the taxi lights and switch on the main landing lights. We'll also do one more sweep of the force panel and press inhibit. We'll set the takeoff monitor, switch on reheat, and your flight can begin. To see Concorde in flight, please check out the video in the description below. I hope you found this cold and dark start tutorial for Concorde useful. If you did, please drop a like, and feel free to subscribe, as I make this kind of content fairly regularly. Take care, and I'll see you next time.